He was a, a patriot, let me say that. Bob was always a joker, always. He was witty, he was gregarious. He became pretty much a wild man. Robert Leckie was one of those young men to find his own way. My father, Robert Leckie, was a Marine. He was Irish, he was Catholic, and those three things painted his life. My father was the youngest of eight children. He was born when his mother was 48, so that when he went off to war, she was 70. I came from a cultivated family. My father was a very cultivated man, and he had a big library. And there were dictionaries and encyclopedias all over the house, and it was an intellectual atmosphere, and you have a head start. My father had lived in Rutherford, New Jersey, pretty much for his whole life. They lived next door to each other. Uh, my mother moved in when she was 12. My grandmother apparently used to refer to him as that fresh kid next door, which I can understand. My father was mischievous, shall we say. My mother was not too fond of Bob. <laughs> he had a reputation in the neighborhood as kind of a wild one, and she always said, don't go near that lucky boy. He had a problem with authority because he thought he knew better than everyone else regarding everything. From the time he went to school, they were throwing him out all the time. I was kicked out of high school fairly regularly. I would get out of the Passaic River with my dog and smoke cigarettes and watch the oil barge traffic. I waited until I was 21, which was December 18th. I went to Paris Island, and at that time, the course was shortened from 12 weeks to six weeks. We were all very green. We were the most high-hearted kids you've ever seen. He was intrigued by the Marine Corps' statement that it was the best. It was the best service, it had the toughest mission, and it was going to put its Marines eyeball to eyeball with the Japanese. When the Marine Corps puts out that kind of message, it gets a lot of tough kids, like Robert Lecky, young men who have a strength of purpose a belief in themselves, and a desire to be the best. Robert Leckie and I were in the same company, which was 8th Company, 2nd Battalion, 1st Marines. We were both privates, first class, and Robert was in a machine gun platoon, and I was in the mortar platoon. We all called him Lucky. Nobody called him Lecky. He was Lucky. I made private four times. I won't discuss the occasions, but I was a wild kid. The last time they gave me a PFC stripe, they said, now don't lose it this time. I said, then why did you put a zipper on it? You know? Robert Leckie was one of the platoon, and he was a good Marine, particularly the night of the Battle of Tenero. August 7th, 1942, it was on the Tenero River. It was called the Ichiki Detachment. It was supposed to be a crack detachment. They attacked my battalion. We killed them all, about 2,200 men or more. We lost 26. We decimated them over a period of about 12 hours. That came to be known as the Battle of the Tenere River. My father had dedicated at my mother's house a park. It is called Tenere Park. It is dedicated to his three best buddies from Guadalcanal through the rest of his time in the Pacific. Lou Jurgens, Chuckler. Bill Smith, Hoosier, and Bud Conley, runner. And it's also dedicated to all the Marines who were in World War II, who, as he said, foremost fighting fell. The Second World War was the defining moment in his life. It was, it was always there. When he came back to this country and we started dating, I felt that he was nervous, he was tense, and it was part of being difficult to get along with him. He had been under a great deal of duress over there. At that time, they didn't get any psychological training. I mean, he went right back and took a job, and he felt he was fine, but actually he wasn't. Bob never spoke to me about his wartime experiences, nor did he ever speak to his children about them. He had terrible 
nightmares all of his life. I frankly don't feel that he ever got over his experience in the Pacific. They had a terrible struggle, and that makes a terrible impression on a young person. He knew that the war had an impact on him, but he fought it all of his life. They did up until the end. And as he got older, it became more evident. My dad died of Alzheimer's in 2001, towards the end, even where he had forgotten all of us. He never forgot being in the Pacific. He felt the Japanese were attacking. We have a pond in front of the house. And he'd say, the Japanese are coming over the pond. And where do we go? And I'd say, Bob, there's nothing there. The Marine Corps was always there. He was devoted to the Marine Corps all of his life. There's a huge Marine Corps emblem on the front of his desk. He loved the Marine Corps. And on his crypt, I have Semper Fi. Because he was very, very fond of the Marines. The relationship my mother and father had was a working relationship. They were partners in the production of his work. I had the same typewriter that he lost in the Pacific. And he said, it's the only thing that I can really work on. So I said, well, you can borrow it when you would like to. He did borrow my typewriter, and I guess I had to marry him to get it back again. But he did write helmet for my pillow on this typewriter. I always wanted to be a writer since I can remember. Writing was his life. He was a, a sports writer or a stringer for the Bergen record when he was 16. He was discharged, and the next day he went to the Bergen record and asked for a job back. So he started working within two or three days after getting out of the Marine Corps. We got married and he went to the Associated Press up in Buffalo, and then he ran the MGM newsreels. They worked three long days to make the newsreel, and in between, he was writing Helmet for My Pillow. Helmet for My Pillow was my own experience as a narrative. Helmet for My Pillow was my dad's first book. It came out in 1957. That was the book he really loved. I mean, he put his heart into that book. And he thought that was the be all and end all, but it wasn't. I mean, from there, you have to go on and write. So he did magazine articles. He did political writing. By the time he was done, he had published around 40 books. He needed to know that people wanted to read what he had to say. Well, I think I've made a contribution, and I'm pleased with it, and I intend to continue. And that was my father. He wanted to make an impression, no matter good impression, bad impression, made no difference to him. He made an impression. <laughs>